Howdy friends, Wes here checking in with Beer Geek Photography. Uh, I do love to shoot film as well as digital. Recently had the chance to pick up my very first rangefinder film camera. This is the Canon Canonet QL17 G3, Generation 3. Uh, the QL17 refers to the quick load film mechanism and the 17 refers to the 1.7 millimeter 35 millimeter lens that this camera has so a very fast um, very fast lens it features a leaf style shutter so it it sinks at all speeds for flash if you're using flash uh, it's very quiet uh, very nice feeling camera uh, very nice in the hand pretty compact a nice little rangefinder camera this is sort of one that people recommend you start out with if you want to check out rangefinders. So I thought I would uh, pick one of these up, pick this up on eBay. And as is very common with any kind of used cameras, particularly if you're buying from a flea market or a garage sale or, or eBay or whatever, is that the light seals have rotted away. You know, they're made, they're made of foam rubber and they just deteriorate over time. You know, this camera's over 50 years old, I think, at this point or very close to it. Um, and so as you see back here in the back, the foam has just sort of fallen apart. Part of it's stuck here to the back of the camera. The other part of it's still left here in the groove in the back uh, where it belongs to go. So this is not a huge, a huge problem. This is easily repairable. That's what this video is gonna be about, is repairing the, the light seals. Uh, but it can be a bargaining tool for you if you're, you know, out at a flea market or whatever and you find a camera you want but the light seals are bad. You can use that as a bargaining uh, tool to get the price down. So this is pretty easy, a pretty easy job to do. There are people out there that sell kits to replace the light seals on particular cameras. A popular camera, I would imagine you can buy a, a light seal kit for a Canonet uh, since these are pretty, pretty common and pretty popular cameras yet today. Uh, but really, you don't even need to buy a kit. What I do is I buy craft foam from the local craft store. Um, I buy this stuff with the adhesive backing. So it, it really, all you have to do is cut it to shape and stick it on after you've cleaned the camera. So it's really simple. You can buy the non-adhesive back stuff and use like a super glue to glue it in if you like. Uh, sometimes that's better for really thin light seals that need to go down inside a groove of the camera. But yeah, for like a dollar, you can buy a sheet of this stuff, a little over a dollar maybe, and you can do probably dozens of cameras with one sheet of this, this uh, self-adhesive foam back paper or foam backed craft foam. Some other things you might need are some Q-tips for helping you to clean. Um, of course, you'll need a, some sort of razor blade or X-Acto knife uh, to cut the foam to shape. You're going to want a straight edge of some kind, something that is metal, uh, has a metal edge to it because you're going to be using a sharp, <laughs> a sharp razor blade so you don't want to cut into a piece of plastic or wood or something like that. You want something with metal on the edge uh, that's going to hold a nice sharp edge. Uh, possibly some paper towels can help with the cleanup process as well. And then to remove the old light seals themselves, I recommend using either lighter fluid uh, this is lighter fluid for like a Zippo wick lighter, or uh, uh, you can use something called Goo Gone. Uh, that's also another uh, popular product. Anything that's designed to remove sticky stuff is a good thing to use to remove these old, uh, old light seals. So pretty simple process. Let's go ahead and get started cleaning on this camera and uh, get, this, get this thing ready to shoot. I think the first thing I'm going to try to do is maybe just scrape off the really heavy amounts of the foam here. I'm going to use the razor itself and try to try to maybe scrape some of this off if I can. Maybe going to tilt this up. Don't necessarily want to get this uh, down in the camera itself because that's just going to be more cleaning I have to do. Okay, I'm going to start trying to clean the uh, the back of the camera here. So I'm just going to take a little bit of my lighter fluid and and uh, wet the end of the Q-tip so that's nice and nice and soaked with the lighter fluid, uh, and then just gently start wiping away the uh, the leftover residue. And just just take your time with this and be patient. Uh, no need to rush it. 
do this while you're watching TV or, or listening to some, some music or whatever it is you enjoy doing in your free time. So that's basically the process for cleaning. I'll come back to you in a, in a few minutes when I'm uh, done cleaning and we can start the seal replacement process. So uh, with the magic of video, see you now. Hey guys, I'm back. Well, as you can see from the window behind me, it is quite a bit later. Uh, I actually had to go to work. Before I did leave for work, I, I did get finished cleaning up the camera here. So I wanted to go ahead and just get to that point before I went to work. So here we have the uh, cannonet all cleaned, all these areas here where the where the foam was stuck down is clean, all the areas here where it was touching uh, has been cleaned as well. It's a really nice clean, fresh surface ready for new padding. Another thing I did discover while I was working on this camera is that this film pressure plate is removable. It uh, just has these sort of spring tabs on it here. It's pretty easy to actually remove that. So they just sort of, uh, this one right here slides on first and then these others sort of slide over these, these little raised pegs here in the back of the door. So that made it a little bit easier to get into these areas and I'm gonna go ahead and leave that off until I get the seals replaced. So uh, it's really a simple process. It's a matter of measuring the width of the foam strips you need cutting those strips and, and sticking them in there. That's really all that, all that there is to do it. Uh, I've measured this, this bottom one here. This one's about seven millimeters wide. Uh, the top one's more like three millimeters. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut some strips and see what we get. First thing is I'm going to measure seven millimeters there and measure in seven millimeters on this end. Just use my straight edge to make the cut. And I'm just going to cut a big long strip. Just, you know, have plenty to work with here. Uh, like I said, these sheets are a dollar a piece, so it's no sense in trying to be frugal here. Um, and that looks like about exactly what we need right there for that one. I'm going to go ahead and peel the backing on this one. Self-adhesive strip just peels right apart. Start in this corner here. I'll have to go back and trim this to fit exactly. I'll, I do want this to lay in this corner nicely here. Just going to use some jeweler's screwdriver here. There we go. Press that down to make sure we have a nice secure fit. And then I'm just going to trim it here. And we'll just go ahead and test this out here. Make sure we're going to, everything's going to work as it should. Seems pretty good there. Might want to trim this a little bit more. It's sticking up just a little bit. I'm worried about that sort of catching on something. I'm going to go ahead and cut another strip that's about three millimeters for the top seal.
And then there was one last seal under, it's kind of, it was kind of hidden underneath this spring clip that seals against this surface right here. I'm not sure, yeah, there you go. It's kind of sealed against this surface right here and it was hidden right under the, the spring clip under here. Uh, just another about three millimeter piece. Uh, there's another one on this side, but this is actually, I don't know if you can see it down in there. It's actually a piece of felt, so that hasn't deteriorated. It's fine, I'm just gonna leave that alone. Um, the, even this piece is probably not necessary. Seeing how you know the door comes down and curves over and overlaps quite a bit here, so it, I have trouble believing that light will actually get in here and around the corner, but just put it in there because there was one there from the factory and I already have, I already have plenty of material here to do it, so might as well do it correctly. This one, I think I am gonna pre-cut. Let's go to right there. And stick this one in here. Sometimes it can be a little finicky getting these in position, but just, again, be patient, take your time. Uh, use the tools you have, whatever, you know, tweezers or little jeweler screwdrivers like this are great to use. Just anything you can use to sort of work things into position. Okay, so there we go. Light seals are placed on a Canon Canonet QL17, uh, but this applies to just about any kind of camera, any kind of vintage film camera. A lot of times they have these sort of foam, foam rubber seals and they've deteriorated over the years. Pretty cheap to replace them by yourself and not too difficult of a job. Uh, just got to be patient, take your time, make sure the surface is really clean before you go ahead and uh, start to attach uh, the new seals. Other than that, I think that's going to do it for this one. I'm going to go ahead and get some film in here and start shooting this tomorrow. I'm excited to give this camera a try. I've been wanting it for a long time and glad I finally found one for a really cheap price. So thank you for watching this guide on light seal replacement on vintage film cameras. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the show notes below. If you would like to, please subscribe. This is a variety channel. I talk about a lot of different things here on the channel. I talk about photography and film cameras, as well as beer, records, automotive stuff. Uh, as I said, anything I'm interested in, it's gonna be here on the channel. So hope you enjoy it. And if you like it, please subscribe. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you again next time. Cheers.